Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. I thought I would look at a Edward Sego painting today. I came across this painting on another video on composition. I've been following another artist on YouTube and he has a series of videos on composition. I really like him. I like him a lot. And they introduced me to new artists that I was not aware of. And that excites me. So I'm going to look at this painting. The video was talking about how this painting is divided in thirds. And all artists are familiar with the rule of thirds. But what I want to show today is how you have to build upon that. There's nothing wrong with breaking a composition in thirds. And I know there's talk online about the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is everywhere online. But the problem with it is that it never goes beyond that. And it gives the artist the wrong idea about what composition is. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with breaking an image on thirds, but you have to go beyond that. For example, you have a dominant vertical here, and then you have a strong vertical here, right? And you have a horizontal line. I believe it's, I believe it's right around, let me try that again. I believe it's right around here, and this is on thirds too, but you have a lot of other divisions going on. For example, you have one here, here, you have a vertical running here and here, then you have a horizontal line here, but you also have a dominant figure right there, and you have a division here. All of these divisions matter, and in fact, you have another vertical running here. The rule of thirds does not account for this, and I'm going to show you how the har the harmonic armature does. You have to understand the rule of thirds is derived from the harmonic armature. So there is a relationship there. But like I said, the problem with the rule of thirds that you see online is that nobody ever goes beyond that. And you're not getting an accurate view of what design is. And let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to start drawing the harmonic armature. And then what I'll do is I'll point out those one third divisions. This is a lovely painting. And again, I found this painting on a video this morning about composition. And I'll put a link to the videos. I, I like them a lot. And I find them interesting because there's so much to, to design that I, I fully admit I don't know everything. I know a lot, but I don't know everything. And I love learning. And if you're if you're an artist that wants to improve, you have to have that desire to learn. There's too many artists and photographers out there that get stuck, you know, when it comes to composition. They don't want to go beyond the rule of thirds, and that's that's just insane. You have to, because if you want to be a highly skilled artist, you have to go beyond the rule of thirds. And, of course, you have all the other ones. What is it? Leading lines and the rule of odds, the rule of space. You know, the... You can't learn anything from those those concepts. They really mean nothing when it comes to design. And I talk about them a little bit in my user's guide just to simply say that folks you gotta go beyond that. That's not that's not real design. So and I hope that my videos are helping a little bit for those that want to take the time to actually learn real design, real composition, and not just those vanilla flavored rules that you find in art. And the other problem with those rules is that they get a bad rap because there's nothing else out there. And then of course you have the dynamic symmetry camps, which is even more confusing. And I do teach dynamic symmetry, but anyway, the this is a harmonic armature. And as I mentioned before, I want to show you where those divisions and thirds are happening. And I think I'll, let me try blue, see if that stands out enough. Actually, you know what, I'm going to change this to yellow. There you go. So here's a one-third division here. And in my opinion, this is a dominant vertical. Then you have another vertical running here, like I said. And that's on thirds as well, because if I drive a horizontal line through these two intersections, one here and one here, guess what? Now I have a rule of thirds grid. So the artist could lay a rule of thirds grid on this painting and go, oh yeah, the artist is... They're using the rule of thirds, but they're not going far enough. And let me show you what I mean. You have a horizontal line here, and that's being derived from these intersecting diagonal lines right there. It's a line in the rooftop. You have another horizontal line right here, and that's being derived from this point 
where these intersecting diagonal lines are in the armature. You have a vertical running here where this section of diagonal lines intersect. You have another one right here. And all of these matter. All of these divisions matter. You have another one here. Why? Because you have a diagonal line and a horizontal line intersecting. I can drive another vertical. So here's all those three pillars. Right, but you also have this horizontal line here, which is on thirds. But then you have another one right here, and this is being derived from this sec this series of intersecting diagonal lines. But what about this one right here? You have another horizontal line right here, a strong one. Well, that's being derived from this vertical and this diagonal line. Remember, wherever you have two lines intersect, you can drive horizontal and vertical lines. Well, here's another horizontal line, which is just as important. And this figure that I had mentioned right here, well, you can drive a vertical where this diagonal line meets that horizontal line. There's your figure. And that figure is important because it stands out among all the other figures in the composition because it's isolated. And if you want to learn more about that, check out the book Pictorial Composition, an introduction by Henry Rankin Poor. But what about this vertical right here? Well, that can be derived from this horizontal and this diagonal line right there. They intersect. There's that other vertical. So my point is today, well, let me draw one more. Actually, you have another vertical right here with this series intersects. So you have all these diagonal lines being played out and then from those you can drive more horizontal and vertical divisions. All of this matters. All of it. You can't just slap a rule of thirds grid on something and say well that's the end of it. That's not how a master composition works. I hope this makes sense. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it as always.